Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another shop review. And this time, we even have two new tanks to talk about. So let's have a look. In the resource section, only the medium researchers kit really makes any sense, and even that isn't as good as the times three gold in the pop-up offer. If you happen to get it, so if you get the times three gold pop-up offer, then that is the better deal here. But if you do need the fifteen times fives, they can be a useful addition to your inventory if you actually need them to grind the next vehicle. Then there is the Colossal Resupply, which is... A, don't buy this. The boosters, they're, they're not even, like... They're they're rare boosters. They're, they're not even any good. Now, if you get this times three gold pop-up, the 20,000 gold for 24 euros can be quite worth it, because for that money, you can basically get four great tier eight premium tanks. That is all you really need. Now, remember... Keep those 24 euros in mind. In the tank section, we have the meme vehicles of the T1E6, the T2 Lite, and the T7 car. And that's all it really they are. Memes, memes, memes. If you want to spend 6 euro on a meme, you can do that. But I wouldn't. I mean, but you can sell them for gold if that's what you want to do. But remember, you can't then purchase it back. Not that you want to anyway. But then we have the mutant and extended pass here and the mutant and the regular pass and also the mutant on its own for the same price as the premium pass remember 24 euros for the same money you can get 20,000 gold the same price so if you get the 20k gold pop-up wh why would you ever buy this i'll talk about this vehicle a little bit in detail later but uh spoiler alert it ain't no good but here is the premium pass that is for the next premium pass which we don't know anything about yet, so there's that. Then we have the T95E6, which is a tier 10 for expert players. Essentially, if you're a good tier 10 player, then this can be a useful acquisition. However, the times fives are locked to the vehicle, and it is somewhat difficult to play. It is a good heavy M that can work really well in the hands of the right player. Then we have the Badger in here in three different offers. Much better price here for the Badger than for the Object 777, 20,000. We also have 30 days of premium in here, unfortunately, these crates, which is quite sad. The times fives are once again locked to the vehicle, which is not great. And the Badger is the better of the tier 10 premium tank destroyers, or collector tank destroyers, because this vehicle plays its role really well. And if you've played the T110E3, or even a WZ113GFT before, and you like that playstyle, this can be a very useful addition to your garage. However, if you haven't already gotten some experience with those kind of vehicles, even an Object 268, then this shouldn't be purchased. But if you really like a vehicle like the E3, this is definitely a great choice to pick up, even though it is more expensive than the T95 E6, but it is definitely a better vehicle than a XM. It's also better than the Object 268 version 4, which suffers from weak sides. Then we have the impeccable and ruthless 6.5k gold for two tier 7s. Now, tier 7s on their own are already not good because they make you less damage and less credits than a tier 8, so the value is already non-existent. The Kunze Panzer is pointless. And then the AT-15A can be good, but it is extremely obscure. And like the Badger, if you've never played a vehicle like this before, and if you don't know already that you're going to enjoy the playstyle of, let's say, you've played an AT-8 or a regular AT-15, and you really enjoy the AT-15, then this can be a good, enjoyable vehicle for you. However, remember, this vehicle derives its performance by not being able to be penetrated by noobs and by having very high DPM to fire back. It doesn't really show a lot of potential in terms of having fun, so you have to know what you're getting yourself into. And we have the Steadfast Resilience, which, well, it's still the same as last week. It's more expensive than the T-77 and the KV-2. The Lance and Caesar tank for experienced players to challenge themselves with to hone your skills in the battle. So not really your main credit grinding vehicle of any type. And the Kyler is a good tier 8 that performs quite well. It's a heavy tank. It, it does better than the Lerve, but obviously the credit coefficient is lower. So if you already have a Lerve, you don't need this vehicle. But if you don't have a German heavy or this like, and you would want one, then buying the Kyler kind of does make sense in a way for 6,500. Unfortunately, without equipment here, if it would be including equipment, it would be a much better bundle. But unfortunately, it does not. 20,000 gold. Remember that? 24 euros. 20,000 gold. I mean, the times fives are unlocked and the gold boosters are nice and the E25 is a fun little meme tank and the Tornwagen is a solid vehicle. It is a solid bundle. 
And it can be worth it. If you want a meme and a solid vehicle that's going to get you just about enough credits that you need. Do you want this or do you want 20,000 gold? A better offer existing makes a offer that was previously there worse because it gets stacked on top. So even though this is good, it becomes worse when there's a better offer available. And then the FCM is just ignorable. Like, just don't purchase this. Please, please, please don't for the for your own sanity. Do not purchase the FCM. I don't even know going to talk about it. Now, the TL7-120 is a waste of space. And the Scorpion G is quite solid in the right hands. But it is quite large. And unfortunately, Wargaming often overprices this vehicle significantly compared to the SU-130 PM, which is of a very similar performance level. But it's always, most of the time, sold a bit cheaper. So, unfortunately, the SU-130 there is the better pickup if it comes back into the shop. Probably gonna get sold for cheaper. So I would recommend waiting for that to happen if you really want the Scorpion G. It's just too expensive. It's a solid tank, but it is too damn expensive. For the 730th million time, open your free crates. Don't buy the paid ones, they're bad. Same goes for draws like the VK90 draw. I mean, there was one singular draw that was good and I made a video about it, but that one's gone. So VK90 is a great tank, but the draw is bad. So do not play the draw under any circumstances. And there's also a tier 8 draw, which might sound great, but here's the problem. Your chance of getting a tank that you're really going to enjoy is a lot lower the more tanks that are in here, right? So let's say you like medium tanks. What if you end up with a tank destroyer? Well, your money is gone. And that's why you should never gamble. Because even if you win a tank, you can still lose by having that tank not fit your playstyle, not be a tank that you enjoy simply by just random chance it's gonna rot in your garage and your money is gone which is why always buy vehicles directly and always think about them beforehand because they don't go away that quickly they're in the shop for a couple of days you can think about it only then you buy a tank because there are no refunds this ain't amazon but this is the sewers the teenage mutant ninja turtles event is ongoing where you can get a turtle hideout garage gear which yeah it's uh here again so um it's cool, it's animated, which is very nice, but um, it's here. You, you'd never see it. Like, the garage gear is here. Which means you'd never see it. Great stuff. Anyway, but there's 10 gold booster here, so I highly recommend playing it. Now, garbage is a word. It can apply to many things. It can apply to objects. It can apply to people. It can apply to YouTubers. It can apply to tanks. And living in the sewers kind of has a lot of garbage going around. And that's kind of what you get with this vehicle as well. Now, obviously, you get it with a free battle pass added on, which adds some value. But the problem with this vehicle, essentially, is that it is very pointless. It is a tier 7, first of all, already reducing its value somewhat. But if you're a big fan of the show, something that I've never watched, so I can't talk about it, then, well, you might as well pick it up because... It looks pretty cool, if that counts. But in terms of performance, yeah, there isn't really much there. The DPM is awful. It's not even a real derp gun. The HE shells on this vehicle are terrible. So there's, there's not much going on. Now, you can't even, like, you can't even pen the side of a tier 6 with the HE shells. So, derp factor, not that great. But it does have high alpha damage, which is a plus for low tier battles. We're just gonna try to get out of here for now. Because 15 seconds reload is quite painful. Not really that great. Now, it does have a T49 turret has a lot more armor on the turret than a T-49, which is at least some nice consolidation. It's a medium tank, but the mobility, eh, it's heavy and light, essentially. It is very heavy and light. It is, it does look like it's put on a way too many pounds as well, so maybe if we send it to the gym, it could become faster and be useful, but hey, I guess not. Now, finally find out the silencer, because you can't even pen that with HE. Of course you can't. He has a two-shot autoloader. He bounced off the front. Now, the armor's not great, but it is definitely workable. So, that's that. But is it worth that much money? Absolutely not. You're paying for the license. You're paying for the look of the view. You're not paying for any performance here. So, because if you want a derp tank, the Smasher already exists. So, there isn't really any value in the performance of the vehicle. But, it at least looks nice to stare at in the garage. But then at that point, I can't help you. I can just tell you, in terms of performance, there is nothing here. But if you want it for the looks, I can't stop you from getting it for that. And now, probably going to lose this battle. 
because the smash was one shot and uh, that black prince is going to aim at me the entire time. I'm not going to play another battle because I don't have time. And I'll still hit him anyway. Well, that's 2.7k damage anyway. And the second vehicle is the Batchat 25T Avenir, or the AP with the skin rather, because if we look at the performance of this vehicle, it's a Batchat 25T AP with minor differences, so it ain't worth anything for that. But this vehicle is available in a clan event starting next week on the 6th of May. The way it works is you can obtain clan tickets via missions or money, and then spend them on rewards. One of the rewards obviously being this vehicle, even though that's not what I would recommend getting because the only value in this vehicle is in its very good HD skin, I might add, but the value here is non-existent, basically. If you can get it for free, I would never, don't. if you're in a clan and it's not that active, please do not pay for clan tickets for, ve for a vehicle like this. It's literally just a batch out of AP. So yeah, 930 clip. Similar, into, like it's it's just a batch at AP. It's not like that. It's uh, where it's better. It's just a batch at AP. That's that's all this vehicle, right? Just kind of add some interest, right? If you like the batch at AP and you want to have it again, but this time with a permanently fixed skin that you can't remove, this would be a great option to own in your garage. And if you have an active clan, you're probably going to get there. You're going to have it. And that's going to be very nice. But in terms of real value uh, unfortunately isn't anything here because it's neither better nor is it different so there's that or well rather significantly different where it does have some differences but those aren't very significant or even relevant in a lot of cases the arm is like oh wow 10 millimeters armor difference that's going to matter nope let's see what can i do here now the problem is here there is garbage and there are medium tank players that go to the heavy tank side those are one and the same thing essentially so going to this side most of the time loses the map control loses the match if not for the enemy team's incompetence then brings it back the other way essentially like if you lose the map control the enemy team has to be pretty terrible to throw it away so let's see but hey you can always throw any team has the capacity to throw. So, let's see whether this one has the capacity to throw. Now, there's a couple of ones that are decently low HP. I'm gonna go and reload here. Still a very mobile vehicle. You can get around with it. Basically, if you want to know how it feels like, get the batch at AP. It plays the exact same. But now... I mean, the batch at 25T at tier 10 is a great vehicle. If you know what you're doing. So that can be worth it. Can be very interesting. Let's see. Dead. Oh, that one. Yep, there seems like they have. They have relinquished some advantage there that they had with their map control. But now it is very important to lock it down, hopefully. Now, the Fender being full HP is a pretty bad thing. But luckily, the Cape is at 70 is also full HP. So, what I want to do here is get as much distance, right? We want to play the map here. The other state's quite low. We can play around that. Um, what was important here, get the easiest target first, right? Get the guns out of the game, right? Because if a vehicle's dead, it can't shoot back at you, so you always want to take out the vehicle that's easiest to take out. Perfect, right there. Because then, you have a more even playing field. And also, this is supremacy, because I forgot to disable it on this account, which is very sad. So we're now probably going to have to play for the cat points. But, uh, you can probably tell I don't like supremacy. Now... I think it should be the primary goal to simply get the ST1, which the KPZ I think is handling quite well, so I'm just going to go down here into B, take the B catch circle, the defender can't actually clip me with his gun. Can, however, try to attack me and go for me. It's not that big of a deal. The points are in our favor, and even if I die here, the KPZ's still alive, so it would still be a win anyway, and now he's going to have to reload for quite a while. And uh, I still have to reload for quite a while as well. So now it depends who has the better reload. Now, I had a lot less. Yeah, it's over anyway. So, uh, yeah, great. We love Supremacy. This vehicle, it's in a clan event. You can get it. If you get it, that is very nice. That is amazing. But if you don't get it, don't worry. It's just a batch at AP with a skip. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. 
See you in the next one. Goodbye.